Good morning. I'm Sumitra Srinivasan. Welcome to the session. Today we will be talking about the changes in the A2 key for schools and B1 preliminary for schools. Before we move on, let us know what Cambridge Assessment English is. Cambridge Assessment English is a part of Cambridge Assessment, a non-teaching department of the University of Cambridge. Cambridge Assessment English is an international not-for-profit organization with over 100 years of expertise in English language assessment. Over 5.5 million qualifications and tests are taken every year. The exams are used by over 50,000 schools. They are recognized by over 20,000 universities, employers, and government bodies. The exams are taken in over 130 countries. Cambridge English Assessment offers a wide range of qualification and tests to meet the needs of the learners of their learning journey and in different contexts. Our exams for schools, as you can see, the purple highlighted in the diagram are designed to reflect the type of learning that goes in schools. There are eight exams, each targeted at a specific level of common European framework of reference for language, which is also known as CEFR. The exams act as milestones as learners progress through school. The content of each exam is designed to reflect the target age and ability with each exam gradually building on the one before so that taking A2 key for schools, for example, provides useful preparation for going on to the next step, that is B1 preliminary for schools. English is a key skill that can help to open opportunities for further study and work both at home and abroad. In collaboration, with the Cambridge English, it carried out a global survey of English language skills at work. The findings are based from a data of 5,300 employers in 38 countries. Around half of all employers offer a better starting package to applicants with good language skills, which can also help them to progress through their job 
and also increased his salary as they specifically show that companies are even more likely to need good English language skills in future than they do now. Cambridge English tests and exams are accepted by over 20,000 plus organizations worldwide. More than 11,000 higher and further educational institutions take up these tests for admission purposes, for credits, and for exit and graduation purposes. Over 6,000 companies use them for recruitment, training, and development, and more than 500 plus government and ministries from around 80 countries recognize them. Please note that there are 3,000 other recognizing organizations, including charitable organization. That is why we hadn't added up with the 20,000. Now, what are A2 for schools and B1 preliminary for schools? The exams cover all the four languages, that is reading, listening, writing, as well as speaking. This has a very positive impact on teaching and learning as it ensures that the teachers practice all the skills and lessons, including communicative activities, and the learners develop the skills needed to use English effectively in the real world. In research projects carried out by the Cambridge English, teachers report introducing more communicative activities in class since starting to prepare students for these exams. Now, let us look at the reasons for the revision of the A2 key, A2 key for schools, B1 preliminary and B1 preliminary for schools for the year 2020. We will first look into why we needed a change. We will also look at the change at the way the results are reported. We will look into what are the changes and how do we prepare the students for the revised exam. At the end of the session, I will recap with the summary of the changes and look at the support available to help prepare learners for these exams. And in case you have questions, you can always get back to the University of Cambridge Chennai office. First, let us talk about why do we need the changes in these exams. First, is to keep them relevant to the needs of the learners because we do find that with the change in the scenario of learning and teaching process, we at Cambridge felt that it should be relevant to the learners. Second, there are a lot of approaches 
which we like to incorporate in the assessment and in the learning process. And when we did a research, we found out that there was a lot of feedback given by the stakeholders, heads, that is the heads of teachers, learners and the exam We were talking about to address the feedback from stakeholders that is heads of English department, teachers, learners, exam centers to align the key or the key for schools more closely with the preliminary or preliminary for schools and higher level exams. The revision process took several years from market research to launch. Let us look at the process we had gone through. First, it began with the market research to assess how the customers around the world were viewing the existing product and what is important. For this, we included school principals, heads of English department, exam administrators, teachers, parents, and learners. Then we also consulted assessment experts with the Cambridge English and consultants. Then we had the draft specification. Then the fourth one, we did a trial with the candidates and we got further customer and expert feedback. The fifth one, we did a review of trialing outcomes and feedback and the specifications were amended as necessary. Then we did a trial again. The specification of the final draft was agreed. And then we started producing the materials for live tests and did the work on updating the support materials, that is the sample papers, the handbooks, the lesson plans, etc. Let us look first at what the market research told us on the key and the key for schools. The data on this table relates to the feedback from teachers, heads of English department, and center exam managers. Generally, levels of satisfactions were very high, with over 80% satisfied with, or very satisfied with most ca cases. While there were some minor differences between key and key for schools, these were not particularly significant. Figures for preliminary and preliminary for schools were similar. As both charts show, one of the areas where there seems to be more room for improvement is in the amount of preparation material available. However, when we looked into this in more detail, it seemed that many schools and teachers weren't aware of all the resources available. When they were shown all the resources, they thought <coughs> they looked good. And later we will be discussing about the resources. Now this is, this slide shows us about the market research feedback. 
I'm giving you a minute to look into the market research feedback for key for schools. Now I want you to look into the market research feedback for preliminary for schools. While market research showed Good levels of satisfaction with the existing tests. Consultation with experts identified some areas for improvement and fine-tuning. The revised tests allowed more opportunity to produce spoken and written language, enabling candidates to demonstrate ability at the CEFR Reading and writing in preliminary and preliminary for schools now have separate papers to allow more time for writing. There is a better balance between reading and writing in the key and key for schools. And there is a removal of repetition and redundancy an increased authenticity in reading. The key or key for schools speaking paper has been revised with more focus on fluency and interactive communication. We have also introduced more of the same tasks across different levels so that there is more of a family resemblance and better alignment across Cambridge English qualification from starters, movers and flyers to key and then on from preliminary to first and beyond. Cambridge English qualifications are designed to support a step-by-step -step development of language. The revision help to make progression from one level to the next in a more clearer and more coherent with repetition of the same tasks across different exams as we will see as we go through the slides. What are the changes which we have incorporated. Let us first look into the key and the key for schools, reading and writing and what has been changed. When revising the reading and writing paper, the aim was to make sure that there was a proper coverage of different reading and writing skills and sub skills at the A2 level while reducing repetition or redundancy. So the new paper is 10 minutes shorter and now has seven tasks and 32 questions. Previously, it had nine parts and 56 questions. There is a greater authenticity in the reading tasks. We will look at the changes and the revised in more detail in the following slides. <coughs> I'm giving you a minute to look at the changes
When you look at the revised part, which you see on the screen, for the key for schools, you can see that instead it is something very similar to part one in preliminary or preliminary for schools. It is still based on understanding the main message in a short notice or text. But each notice or text now has three multiple choice options and the candidates have to choose the correct answer A, B or C. Part 4 in the revised exam combines all parts 2 and 5 and is a multiple choice closed text with a lot of importance given to the lexical grammatical focus. I'm giving you 30 seconds to go through the slide. In the new part 7 task, students are asked to write a story on three pictures. This is similar to the story writing task in flyers. So students who have already done flyers will be able to build on the skills they have developed to write a narrative and link ideas. At key, they should write 35 words or more. This new task will enable stronger candidates to demonstrate a wider range of writing skills than the old test. In case you want to prepare your students for the key or the key for schools reading and writing please ask your students to register at the link given below it is penfriends.cambridgeenglish.org once they register they would be able to find language which will help them to communicate better Now let us look at the key or the key for schools listening and what's changed. The listening part remains the same length, but there have been some changes to the task and to the order. They are in so less complex tasks. The complex task actually comes first based on the research. Part one is same as above. There is no change in the first part. Part two is old part five. Old part four and five were both gap fills. One has been removed to eliminate redundancy and to ensure that the focus is on testing a range of listening skills. Part 3 is a multiple choice task based on a longer listening. In the old test this was focused on information giving with answers consistently coming from the person responding to questions. Now the answers come from both speakers. Part 4. This is a new multiple choice based on five short text. We will look at an example on the next slide. 
Part four, test feelings, opinions, and gist, helping to align key with preliminary and first. Part five is the old part two, that is listening to a longer text for specific information. What you see on the screen is an example of the new part four for key or key for schools listening, which is based on five short texts and test feelings, opinions and gist. CambridgeEnglish.org has a range of learning activities covering different skills at different levels that make good homework activities or provide extra practice. This is an example of a listening activity about going to a cinema that practices listening for simple factual information with multiple choice questions. It takes only five to 10 minutes and the learners can check their answers. The market research in relation to speaking suggested that there was room for improvement. So we have taken this feedback on board there has been a small change to part one and there is a completely new part two which we will soon look at. Part one has the same type of questions and same testing focus as before. But the questions are now around a common theme, as you can see on the slide. Candidates are asked questions about two topics in part one. The candidates are asked questions in turn about each topic. This is the new part two task, a collaborative task where the students talk together about a topic with some pictures to help them. The pictures are used as prompts for candidates to express their opinion about the different activities, things or plays represented. There are they are only expected to talk about themselves. They are not asked to think about a situation or about the needs or opinions of someone else as they do at the preliminary test. In phase two, the interlocutor extends the discussion. During the trialing of the new task, examiners provided the feedback. In the old part two task, they felt that the candidates were restricted in the language they produce by the nature of information exchange task, asking and answering questions based on prompts given. Examiners think that the new task would support better classroom practices by exposing the candidates to a broader range of language or language functions by increasing the focus on fluency and by encouraging the practicing of managing meaningful interaction, that is to initiate conversation, to take turns, negotiate, 
and develop meaning. What you see on the screen is the ways in which you can prepare the students for key or key for schools speaking. You can look at the different topics and this is like a mind mapping for students which will help them to come out with different words thereby help them to speak more fluently. You can try such activities which would first make the students think and give the answers. Now let us look at the preliminary or preliminary for schools reading and what has been changed. The reading and writing paper for preliminary and preliminary for schools have been separated as it was a very long paper. The reading part has now six parts and takes 45 minutes. Five of the six parts overlap with key or key for schools and five of the six parts overlap with first for schools bringing better alignment across exams. Now let us look at the changes. Part one is unchanged. Part two is also unchanged. Part three is the old part four and involves a longer text for detailed understanding with five, four option multiple choice questions that is A, B, C or D. In the old test, the first question asked about the writer's purpose has been removed as it overlapped with the final question on global understanding. Part four is a new gap test task. Sentences have been removed from the test and the candidates have to decide which sentence goes in which gap. So this is a better understanding of the gist and the text structure. Part five is unchanged. Part six is a new open gap fill task. Candidates read for detailed understanding at word and sentence level, filling in six gaps in a text. This predominantly focuses on grammar and aligns preliminary or preliminary for schools with other exams. Let us now look at the two new tasks. This new task is similar to the one for B2 first exam. Trialing showed that it would also work well at B1 level. There are five gaps and the candidates have to choose which sentence goes in which gap. There are three distractors. To do this particular task, they have to understand the gist of the text and the text structure. And open gap fill has been introduced as new part six bringing preliminary or preliminary for schools in line with key and first. This particular example, what you see on the screen is taken from complete preliminary for schools. You have a lot of exercises like this on the cambridgeenglish.org portal which will help your students prepare for preliminary or preliminary for schools reading.
now let us look into what has been changed in the preliminary or preliminary for schools writing part 1 is a new email task we will look at an example on the next slide part 2 is same as the old writing part 3 but the students can now choose to write a story or an article rather than a letter making the task more relevant to today's learners broadening the range of writing skills tested achieving greater alignment with first and ensuring that there is no overlap with part one writing output has been raised from approximately 150 words to approximately 200 words 100 words per task and there is more opportunity for strong students to demonstrate a wide range of writing skill this is an example of the new part one for preliminary or preliminary for schools writing in the old communicative message task candidates wrote 35 to 40 words they now have to write an email of about 100 words so strong candidates have the opportunities to demonstrate the full breadth of their writing skill this slide shows tasks for both preliminary and preliminary for schools giving an example of how the tasks vary across two versions of the exam. I'm giving you around 30 seconds to go through the slide. In part two, candidates now have a choice between an article or a story. An article is suitable for eliciting language functions appropriate to B1, as defined by the CEFR can do statements. Candidates can write about feelings or opinions about a subject that is familiar to them so that they can produce a personal concrete response based on their own personal experiences helping them to give confidence and stronger candidates can write something more elaborate so the choice will help the students come out with their understanding of the article or the story in a better way let us talk about how to prepare the students for the preliminary or preliminary for schools writing you have a write and improve dot com portal you can log into it choose a topic write about it in English and once you submit it you get an instant feedback definitely this would help your students improve writing let us look into what has been changed for preliminary or preliminary for schools listening the listening paper for preliminary or preliminary for schools remains the same length there is one new task and the order of some tasks has been changed so they get gradually more complex part one is unchanged candidates even now listen to seven short tests and choose the right picture a b or c 
that is listening to the key information. Part 2 is a new task. Candidates listen to six short unrelated texts and choose the right answer A, B or C. We will look at an example in the next slide. This task mainly focuses on attitudes and opinions of the person. Part 3 is unchanged. Candidates listen to a longer audio and fill in the missing information. Part 4 is same as old part 2. Candidates listen to a longer text for detailed understanding and choose the right answer A, B or C. The old part 4 yes or no has been removed. On the screen, you can see the new part for the preliminary or preliminary for schools listening. This task is similar to the first or first for schools listening part one. And the new part four task in key or key for schools. Candidates listen to six short recordings and answer a three multiple choice questions about each text. The test focuses on understanding and identifying opinions, attitudes of the person. Virtually Anywhere is an audio series for students at B1 or B2 level to practice their listening skills. There are seven episodes that the students can work through on their own and there are lesson plans available for teachers so that they can use these materials in class. It can be found on cambridgeenglish.org. This will help you prepare the students for preliminary or preliminary for schools listening. The speaking paper is very similar to the old test, but there are some minor changes that make the speaking test more similar to first or first for schools. Let us look into the changes. Part one is unchanged. In the introductory phase, there is a so short conversation between the interlocutor and each candidate. Part two, each candidate talks about a different photo. It is similar to Old part three, the two photos are no longer thematically linked to each other as they were in the old part three. Part three is same as old part two. The interlocutor gives the candidate some pictures and describes a situation. The candidates are asked to use a lot of functional English <clears throat> to discuss alternatives, make and respond to suggestions and negotiate agreement so as to take the best course of action for the situation described. Now let us look into the part four for the preliminary or preliminary for schools for speaking. Part 4 is similar to old part 4 but it's now thematically linked to the collaborative task in part 3 and not to the photos as it was before which makes it flow more naturally as a conversation. There is a three-way discussion with the interlocutor 
Candidates talk about preferences, habits, and opinion in relation to the topic. These are some of the topics the students can be talk when you are preparing them for the preliminary or preliminary for schools speaking. There are some words which have been introduced looking at the changes we have and you can always get this list from the cambridgeenglish.org website. Now let us look at how the results are reported. The main change to the way results are reported for key and the preliminary is that from January 2020. Candidates get an A, B, C grade rather than pass with distinction, pass and merit, pass as they did previously. This brings key or key for schools and preliminary or preliminary for schools into line with the first advanced and proficiency. I want you to look in onto the screen. The candidates for key and key for schools will now get separate scores for reading and writing and not as a combined score for reading and writing paper. Candidates now receive statement of results and a certificate. The statement of result is released online four to six weeks after the paper-based exams and two to three weeks after computer-based exam. Certificates are sent to the exam center approximately three weeks after the online test. I want you to look onto the screen about the sample certificate. Let us celebrate success. Please do have a certificate ceremony for the students so that they feel very proud in completing these exams. <coughs> now let us look at the summary of the changes. I'm giving you two minutes to go through the summary. It talks about more opportunities to demonstrate a range of speaking and writing skills. Reading and writing in preliminary and preliminary or schools are separate. Better balance between reading and writing in key or key for schools with the re removal of repetition and redundancy. More focus on fluency and interactive skills in key or key for schools speaking. More use of the same task types across exams and grading change to A, B or C to improve alignment across Cambridge English qualification and very minor change in the word list. Now let us look at the exam support and preparation. What you see on the screen are the resources for teachers which you can get from cambridgeenglish.org. There are various 
course books which prepare students for the revised exam. Have a look at the course book which we have showed on the screen now. Power Up is a six level primary course book. Level five prepara provides preparation for key for schools and level six for prime preliminary for schools. Prepare is a seven level course for teens, which combines general English and exam preparation. Level two and three provide gradual preparation towards key for schools and level four and five for preliminary for schools. Complete is the most thorough and integrated exam preparation course. There are books for key and preliminary for schools. Compact is a short intensive exam course book which focuses on exam preparation but ex expects students to already be the target language at the target language level. Open World provides preparation for A2 key and B1 preliminary but not for schools. There is also a set of practice tests for each exam and a trainer for both key for schools and preliminary for schools. In case you have any questions, please contact your exam the Cambridge Center at Chennai so that we can look into it and get back to you. Thank you and have a great day.